I am continuing my ballet journal. And um, this one I am calling Ballet West Kid Tours, Navigating the Politics of Mr. Hart. This is going to be in a series of pieces as I put it together. And so I was unable to get the whole, whole thing done. So this is probably part one of probably three parts that will probably be with this one. So I have never been good being a politician in any realms that required such things in ballet. There are many ways that the politics play out, and I have never been a person that could be an ass kisser without feeling like I wanted to throw up. There is a difference between doing an Academy Award winning performance to get released from my Berlin contract and another thing entirely to subjugate myself to the insane whims of a director who never had my best intentions at heart. There are places and moments in time when it becomes clear that the writing is on the wall and that things are not going in the direction that is going to be fulfilling. I knew the moment that Bruce Marks left Ballet West to take over being director of Boston Ballet that things were never going to be the same. I knew that my career was going to wind down because Bruce Marks was a director that saw something in me, promoted faith and belief in my abilities, and gave me opportunities to expand and become something more. It was a rare gift. I know that not all dancers felt what I did, but there was a special something that connected him and me, and I embraced the gifts he offered and tried to do my best to become something deeper inside that longed to awaken. There are many parts of this ending that seem to consistently unravel over the next three years, I tried to deny that they were happening, but deep inside, I knew that eventually the only doorway would be to leave ballet entirely. I never, ever wanted to be a ballet teacher. I could never have stomached the ballet moms in the studios. I would have thrown them out on their asses for some of the stunts I constantly saw so many of them do. In my own childhood, I refused to let my own mother into the studio. I chose to confront ballet teachers myself and dealt with the issues that arose to the best of my immature abilities in those moments in time. And I did not do all those moments well. But I learned each time I tried. I was honest and sincere. I tried to be authentic in every encounter. Some used it against me, and that is to be expected from certain types of egomaniacs, but I do believe that some, such as Bruce Marx, appreciated the intention behind my actions and words. In the end, I knew I would have to live with my actions and choices. I would rather take responsibility for my mistakes than to spend a life whining about what others did to me. It started when they announced that Bruce Marx was leaving for Boston Ballet and the authorities or guild had chosen Fleming Flint the director of Ball Dallas Ballet, to take over from Bruce. Being from Dallas, I knew all the news about Dallas Ballet, and in my normal, outspoken fashion, I blurted out in shock, do you know who this person is? Do you know that he did a very controversial ballet naked on stage where he performed his own suicide with a knife in a very avant-garde production in Europe? And you are bringing this man to Mormon, Utah, with that type of reputation? How is that going to go over when the forces within the church find that out? Oh, and you are merging Ballet West with Dallas Ballet? Are you insane? Do you not know that Dallas Ballet is $5 million in debt and you are the cash cow for this person to save his reputation? Seriously? I remember their stunned faces when they realized their mistake and their lack of follow through and checking this person out. The meeting suddenly ended and for a bit, we did not hear anything more. That was until one day when there was going to be a new candidate who was going to teach ballet class for us. In walked Mr. John Hart, a former principal royal ballet dancer. He was in his 60s and seemed kind and understated. He honestly admitted that he really did not teach class much anymore, and so this was not his strong suit. His class was fine, and he seemed a decent person, and somehow he passed without drama. The next thing we knew was that he was the new director of Ballet West. At the beginning, I was hopeful but I did go through, go to Boston Ballet and audition to check out what things might be like over there. 
But much to my disappointment, the cost of living, once again, for a large city such as Boston seemed prohibited, and I opted to stay put. Besides, Bruce was different over there. Something huge had shifted in him, and I was sure it was because of the death of his ex-wife, Tony Lander. It seemed clear that he wanted to clean the slate and start over. On all levels, Boston just did not feel like the thing to do, so much so that I did not even ask if he would hire me for Boston Ballet. Everything about it felt wrong for my path and my life. So back to Ballet West and dealing with this very stuffy English director that seemed okay on the surface, but something just did not feel right either. But as we say, the evil we know. The next thing is that I'm suddenly promoted to soloist with Wendy Fideldi and Lisa LaManna. I am happy, thrilled, confused, and uncertain as to what is going on. It was not that I had not earned that position, but it came from a place that I did not think that Mr. Hart really knew who I was. And I talked myself out of being so gloomy. After all, I had gotten an acknowledgement that I had always hoped and dreamed for, and this was also hard-earned, right? I probably should add in here that I had gotten mononucleosis and ended up with chronic fatigue syndrome, but no one knew what that was back then, so each day was a struggle. The irony of that illness was that I got it just before Tony Lander died, and there's a long story around me, her, and the karmic journey that we were both on during that time. I will get to that story at another point. I was deathly sick in bed when the news came that she had died I, in my very weakened state. I knew she had died, and it would that and it was a whole other story that I'm going to tell just at another time. Suffice it to say that her death took a toll on all of us at Ballet West, and then Matthew Degnan died right after. It had been a lot of death in just months. A few months after that, Bruce was off, and we were on a new trajectory for Ballet West. I tried to stay positive. This was a new era, era for all of us. And I should be happy because I'm finally in a more prominent position, right? But something inside felt I, that there was the end of the ride approaching, that a train was coming, going to come in slow, but it was coming in steady. While I did not know how all things would unfold, let's just say that eventually one has too many signals to deny what lies ahead. I will tell you more tomorrow.